We're going to talk today about simple solutions for you to live better at home, but also how to make your housework better for you so that you can stay where you know and love. We're going to talk a little bit about some no-cost and low-cost solutions that could increase your quality of life uh, at home, whether or not you're having current difficulties or limitations. Uh, we'll wrap up with some home evaluation and funding options and then leave a little bit of time for questions. As Tara said, I'm Jessica Ingman. I own Evolvewell Occupational Therapy. I've been an OT for about 21 years. Uh, most of my experience has been in community mental health and home care. And I'm currently enrolled in an executive certificate in home modification through the University of Southern California. And at the end of October, I'm gonna be getting my certified aging in place specialist. So I'm working on a couple of credentials to sort of help with this interest area. Um, I provide home-based outpatient therapy. So I bring therapy to people in their homes. And I also do home modification services. And this is Siri, who's helping me out today. She's a master's level occupational therapy student who is doing a internship, or we call it field work in our world, uh, for 12 weeks. So you can flip it. Um, so we all take steps to remain safe, happy, and comfortable in our homes, right? Like we're all doing things in order to um, keep things going well. So an example, we might currently be in the process of winterizing because fall is coming. Fall is here and winter apparently has arrived as well. Um, we clean and fix things that are broken. Like if we have a leaky sink, we might uh, make sure it doesn't cause any further damage, but also we don't want to slip and fall on water on the floor. Um, we also keep ourselves safe by making sure we do things like locking our doors at night so people don't come in and disrupt our personal safety. Uh, we do things to make our life more efficient and convenient. We use things like high efficiency wash machines nowadays instead of doing the whole day using the washboard and hanging our clothes out to dry. Um, the tips and ideas we're going to talk about today will give us some other ways that we can increase that prevention, insurance, efficiency, and convenience. Whether, again, a not, whatever age we are and whatever abilities we have. So we're going to look at three different areas. We're going to look at our abilities. So we can build strength. We can build flexibility. We can also compensate. So everyone's senses start to change as we age. Our vision starts to change. Our hearing starts to change. So there's some things we can do to compensate for those abilities changing. We can look at our activities. So the things that we want and need to do in our day-to-day -day living, there's equipment and tools that we can add in to make it easier for us. We can learn some new tricks or change up some of our routines. The way we've always done things might not work as well for us. We might need to look at modifying that. And then lastly, we can look at our environment. So how can we make our environment work better for us by modifying it? So why talk about aging in place? We want to talk about some statistics. So we know that there's a lot of people over the age of 65. And we also know that people over the age of 65 want to stay in their current home and community, the vast majority, so 90% according to AARP, say they want to stay where they're at because that's where they know and that's where they want to be. So the green is single family homeowners. And this is people under 50. 50 to 64, 65 to 79, and then 80 and over. So basically just showing these are people that say they want to stay in their home out of all the people. So the other thing that we know is that as we um, age, 36% of adults over 65 say that they're starting to experience difficulty with at least one of the following areas. So independent living, self-care, ambulation or mobility, cognition, vision, hearing, and then any um, other disability. So around 36%. Uh, another thing that we know is that in the White Bear Lake area survey that was done, 51% of our area seniors said that their health impacts their ability to get out and access the community. So we know that we're starting to have a little bit more difficulty living in place, and it affects our ability to do these daily living skills. Um, so we know that people want to stay home. We know that some of us are starting to have a little bit of difficulty with those day-to-day -day activities, and we know that falls are a big factor. So 
falls impact a lot of people. We also know that less than 50% of falls get reported. And if someone does fall and, and results in a hospitalization, it's really expensive and it can create a lot of chaos in life. So couple all of those things together with the fact that our homes aren't really built to age with us. Our houses get older, but they don't change as we change. They call that the Peter Pan syndrome, right? Our houses want to stay young forever, but we don't. So we want to make some changes to make our houses work for us. These are the five essential things, uh, features that they say uh, help us to age in place. So having a no-step entry, single floor living, wide hallways and doors, accessible electrical controls, and then lever, level, lever style handles for doors and faucets. Another thing to know is less than 1% of homes across America meet all five criteria. And two out of five meet one or none of the criteria. So our houses aren't built to be accessible. Um, 51, oh, go back, yeah, 51% of the houses in the White Bear Lake area are over 50 years old. So we know that we have aging homes and an aging community and that those things don't necessarily match. Um, do you need all five of these things in order to be able to stay safely in your home? No, but we'll talk more about some other ways that you can help make adaptations to make your house work better for you. So we're gonna start with abilities. So again, that's what we can do for ourselves. And I'm gonna go through some of the different areas and th these are outlined on your handout. So we'll start with strength, balance, mobility, and endurance. So kind of that physical piece. Getting cardio exercise. So 20 minutes a day, getting your heart rate up most days of the week. Walking is one of the best ways to do that, but any way that you enjoy is important. Um, since we're all women, resistance exercises are really important to do some sort of weight training or weight bearing exercise. We are much more um, prone to osteoporosis and so making sure at least twice a week you're doing something that involves weights, whether it's hand weights, body weight, or carrying around things at home just to give you a little bit of that resistance training. Also doing some sort of daily stretching to maintain flexibility and range of motion. The next area is cognition and memory. So some ideas for that are to use planners, calendars, checklists. Having some sort of visual reminder can really help us with memory. So vi putting visual cues in your environment. Um, engaging in mentally stimulating activities and social interactions. So making sure you're doing things that you enjoy that are keeping your brain sharp and um, the Senior Center offers a lot of those things, right? There's a lot of social opportunities plus different uh, mentally engaging activities. And then breaking down tasks. So when you have a lot of things to do, make sure you're breaking them down into separate steps and then focusing on only one thing at a time. Uh, all of us, again, are women. We tend to like to multitask and they show that's actually really inefficient for our brain. So we really want to try to focus on just doing one step of a task at a time. And then emotional well-being and pain management. When we feel better, we do better. So staying connected to other people, again, with social and leisure activities. So that's gonna help our cognition and memory, but it's also gonna help our emotional well-being and help us manage pain. Um, eating well-balanced meals, following the government uh, MyPlate recommendations. So MyPlate, has everyone seen it changed? It used to be a pyramid and now it's a plate. And basically my plate says half of your plate should have fruits and veggies, a quarter of your plate should be a quality protein source, and then a quarter of your plate should be whole grains or some sort of starch-based food. Um, practicing deep breathing, I should do that right now, right? <laughs> and mindfulness activities. Um, engaging in something like yoga or Tai Chi, those are really good for mindfulness, breathing, but they're also good for those physical things we talked about, like balance and coordination and strength and flexibility. There's also some really good apps out there to teach breathing and mindfulness, and I know there's some classes in the community to focus on kind of breathing and mindfulness. There's a lot of research being done right now around kind of the neuroscience and all the benefits of just breathing. And we carry that with us all the time. So I say it's one of the most important tricks that we can do is just take a breath. 
you know, a really nice deep breath can really reset um, our emotional well-being. Getting seven to eight hours a night of sleep is really important, so looking at sleep hygiene and sleep routines, and then using a med box just to help organize um, medications. Then thinking about some of our day-to-day -day activities, a lot of them require our vision. We know that after age 60, our eyes require three to four times more light than they do earlier in life. So I, we made this room nice and dim so you can't see anything. Isn't that nice of me? <laughs> I know you need three to four times more light and then we shut the lights off. Um, some ways to do this are to have uniform lighting. So if there are shadows, that makes it even harder. So if you have a hallway or something that doesn't have really good light, those shadows can really increase your risk for falls. Um, using task lighting, so if you're sitting at a computer or something having a lamp or near your favorite chair, making sure you have good lighting over that. Uh, making sure there's color contrast. So again, our eyes see if there's contrast, if everything kind of blends in. So this house, everything is kind of white. So where that fence starts and how big the yard is and where the house is could be kind of hard to tell because there's not a lot of contrast there. Using magnifiers, so something to make things look bigger. Large print materials. I know from the pharmacy you can also request larger print on pill bottles because that's one area where it can get really small and hard to see. And then technology. Has anyone heard of the app Be My Eyes? So it's a free app. You do have to sign up, like have an email account, but it's free. 24 hours a day they have somebody who will read to you. So if you hold up your phone and say, what does this label say? someone on the other side will, will read it out loud to you. And you can just walk around your house and say, please tell me what this says or what I'm looking at. So that's kind of, it's a really cool um, app. Um, and then conserve your energy for the things that are most important to you. Um, a lot of people talk about energy conservation in relation to how much electricity we use, and I want to talk about it and how much energy we use to do the things we want, because we each have just a set amount of energy, and if we're spending all of it on just getting up and getting dressed and showering, we might not have enough left to want to go out and engage with other people and things like that. So. Make sure that you're storing things in easy to access locations. If you're using a bowl to do mixing every day, but you like to store it up here because that's where it's always been, try to move it down. We should store most of our things between our shoulder and our knee height. That's kind of the safest to access it. And sometimes it's been that way for years and we don't know why. I've gone through my kitchen and said, why do I store that favorite pan like down here where I can't get at it? Um, so maybe just looking at rearranging. Prioritizing, again, if you have something really important happening, are there any other things that you could move that aren't as high priority? And then pacing yourself, making sure that you leave enough time to do the things you need to do. Because when we rush, that's when we start to get unsafe with the things we're doing. Um, making life easier by ordering groceries and supplies online. And then using Meals on Wheels or home care services, if certain tasks are difficult, prioritizing. So I don't like to cook anyway, and so for me, Meals on Wheels might be a way that then I can save that big chunk of energy. I can get a healthy meal and then I can save that energy to maybe go out and hang out with my friends or visit my grandkids or do something I really want to do. So sometimes we look at these services as like a negative thing, like, oh, I'm not able to do things, but I want to reframe it and look at it as it's smart. It's a way to be efficient and to use your energy on what you want. Um, let the equipment and tools do the work. So in industry, we always say work smarter, not harder, right? So if there's any opportunity to use something electric versus hand that's going to take less of your energy, using things that have a bigger grip. Um, does anyone use a bidet? I, as I'm doing my courses, they talk a lot about them. And I know in the Midwest, that's not a thing. In Europe, it seems to be a bigger, but they are really actually quite efficient and effective. And toilet hygiene gets really hard for people. The, all the bending and reaching and balance that takes place in the toilet hygiene routine, this kind of takes care of all of it with just a push of a button. Um, also adding length, like making the tool get longer. So using reachers or long handled sponges. Again, let the tool do the work so your body doesn't have to. Um, equipment and tools continued. So some of these start to move into our last area around home modification. So using handheld shower heads. Um, furniture razors, so again, if you're 
um, couch starts to feel a little too low or that favorite chair, maybe putting some risers or a platform underneath it so then it's not quite as hard to get up and down. Using toilet risers or safety rails, shower benches, grab bars. I wanted to put this picture up. I don't know if any of you guys have seen these. A lot of people don't want to do grab bars because they feel like it makes things look industrial or like there's something wrong with you. And they're starting to make grab bars that look more design friendly. So that's a towel rack that's actually a grab bar. The paper towel holder or the toilet paper holder is actually a grab bar. Obviously don't use yours if they're not currently installed to be a grab bar. But if they are, that can be a really nice, and they don't look you know, institutional or anything like that. Um, and then having lever door handles instead of the grasp and turn, because the lever makes it easy to get in and out. And then U-shaped cabinet pulls. So again, if you're having trouble with grasping, you can just slide your hand in and pull. Um, some free ideas for your home environment. Uh, check outdoor walkways. So right now, we're going to get a lot of wet leaves on our front walkway, right? And that's a big slip hazard. So making sure there's not debris on your walkways. Uh, move cords and wiring. So like I wasn't able to stand over there because I would have tripped on that cord about five times by now. Um, and if you do have cords and wiring, try to have them taped down or moved to the edge and then taped against the edge. Um, remove clutter from stairways and hallways. I don't know if anyone else is guilty of this, but I set everything right outside my door to get it later. And I have actually fallen going into my garage because I left a box on the step. And so making sure there's not clutter there. Check your carpeting at transitions. That's where it starts to pull up. And that can be a bit of a trip hazard. Remove throw rugs. Has anyone had a hip or a knee surgery and had someone come out and say you have to remove all your throw rugs? People get a little defensive about that. And so what I want to say is they are dangerous. And if you love them so much and have to have them, at least tape them down so that you're at less risk for getting injured. Uh, and then rearrange furniture. Again, often if we've lived somewhere a long time, we just have things a certain way because that's the way it's been. And it might not always work the best for us if we start to use a walker or um, need to get around a little bit differently. So looking at how to rearrange furniture to make my pathways a little bit more open. Maybe that hall table that's been there you know, for a long time could move somewhere else. Uh, more no-cost solutions, lighting. So I think you said you sat in the back so you could be by the natural light. Um, open blinds, curtains, and shades during the daytime, so take advantage of natural light. And then if you have bushes or shrubs that are blocking any of your windows, maybe trim them back so you get a little bit more natural light. To avoid burns and scalding, set your home water temperature uh, to 120 degrees. Again, our sensory system starts to change, our skin sensation, so noticing how hot things are can start to change a little bit. So we just want to make sure if we can set our house to help prevent that from happening. And then open shelving. So they chose to remove cabinet doors just so they could more easily access and see what they had going on. Uh, and then some low cost ideas. Add that contrast for vision using duct tape or stickers. Uh, microwaves are one that's pretty common that the buttons all look the same. And so maybe taking a little piece of colored duct tape and putting it on the start button or the add one minute button or the cancel button just so you have an idea exactly where that button is. And then no slip tape on hard surface steps. So again, my transition to the garage, it's a cement step and then a cement floor, and they look exactly the same. And so it's hard to see where that step ends. So putting a nice black piece of nonstick tape will, one, tell me where that is, but then two, it'll help my foot when I go out so that I'm less likely to slip if I move that box and all the clutter. Uh, a couple other ideas for low cost, adding lighting. So you can have remote control lighting, the little night lights that stick on the wall, motion sensor night lights. So if you get up at night and have to go to the bathroom, it'll turn on. And then they actually, I haven't seen one of these, but they make toilet bowl lights. So when you lift the lid, lights up. I don't know if it would help women that sit, but I suppose getting to the sit part. <laughs> Maybe my husband needs one of those. Um, and then, as we talked about, a lot of our houses are, are older and they might not be built. Um, they might have that Peter Pan syndrome, so we might need to do some of the bigger projects. Some of the most common are ramps, uh, vertical lifts, stairway lifts, where you ride up in the stair thing, uh, widening doorways for walkers and wheelchairs. 
And then bathrooms, adding like a curbless shower versus the step-in tub. And then ceiling track system would be a pretty elaborate uh, project. Um, if you do decide that you want to do one of these bigger projects to your home, um, don't go with the, I think this will work. Like who's gonna, like if we come down this ramp, what's, <laughs> what's gonna happen? Um, so make sure that you're consulting with people who are licensed and that are qualified to do these kind of changes, not like Cousin Joe who's like, I got an idea, this will look great. <laughs> Um, and then also thinking about the contrast. So someone might say, well, it's universal design, I think the, and I think these white will blend in really well, so you can't tell the grab bars are there. Exactly, you can't tell the grab bars are there. <laughs> so you can't see where they're at, it makes it harder to use them. Another thing to take into consideration is universal design. A lot of people will say, well, we use universal design. Well, I don't know. If I just scan this room, we have people of different heights, different sizes. I'm guessing you have different reachability, different graspability, and universal. we're not all universal. So it puts it in kind of the right area, but you might have a different need. So making sure you're working with somebody that's going to take that into consideration versus just saying, grab bars always go on this wall. <laughs> all right. Um, so getting a home evaluation or assessment, there's a couple of different options. Uh, one, you can do it yourself. So AARP has a home fit guide online that's free and you can download it. It has a checklist for each room and gives you some ideas of where to start. Um, if you are in the hospital or skilled nursing facility, they'll often maybe do a home assessment before you go home to check on what your bathroom looks like. They'll tell you to get rid of your throw rugs, <laughs> those kinds of things. Um, if you're doing outpatient OT or PT, um, you can find an occupational therapist. I happen to know one. And you can also request um, from your physician a referral. Um, if you do choose, I'll do a quick plug, what to expect if you work with an occupational therapist. Again, we're going to look at your home environment, but we're also going to look at your abilities and then how you do your activities and how do those things all fit together and then what we can actually tweak or work on each one of those three versus just building out something or giving you some equipment. Um, we're a partner in the whole process, so we'll connect you with resources, contractors, people who can actually do the implementation, but then come in for follow-up. So how is this working for you? Let's see how you transfer with this new equipment. Let's see how it looks for your home. We'll help to analyze costs and benefits of aging in place versus moving. So we can say your bathroom might need this, this, and this. This is how much it will cost, and then maybe if you had a helper come in once a week, that's how much this total would cost to stay in place. Or if you move to an assisted living facility, this might be the cost. So we could do an apples to apples to think about if I do these things, how long might that be for a return on my investment versus what it would cost to be in assisted living. Um, occupational therapy visits are covered by insurance um, under outpatient Part B benefits with a doctor's order. And how do I pay for all of this, right? Like I decided I do want to do some things to my house. I'm interested in staying there. Um, if you're on Minnesota Medical Assistance, they have waiver programs. So the elderly waiver offers some, um, caught some home modifications, rebuilding together Twin Cities. Lions Help is a local. Does anybody know about Lions Help here in town? If you need some small modification kinds of things done, they'll do ramps, but they'll also come in and if your garage is kind of wonky and you just need a spring tightened, they come out and do little things like that. The, you can apply for home repair loans and grants. If you're a veteran, you can go through the VA. Uh, if it's a big um, you know, total house remodel, you could look at a reverse mortgage. Um, or you can do self-funding. There are some tax credits, and I think there's some things before Congress right now to increase tax credits because, again, of those statistics we talked about earlier. The whole country is noticing these statistics and trying to do more to help people modify their homes to be safe. Um, and then there are some lower cost alternatives. So there's some programs like Help at Your Door that will offer home modification, but they do it at a reduced rate. Did everyone get the new resource guide? Are they out here? So the Senior Center just put together a new resource guide that has all the local resources. And they have, basically all of these things are in that resource guide.
Um, if you're wanting to get some equipment, like shower chairs, um, walkers, things like that, some resources, Medicare and insurance have some pretty limited coverage, but they do cover hospital beds and wheelchairs, and then sometimes they'll do some other things. You can contact local disease or disorder associations, so the Arthritis Foundation will do some little home modifications. State Services for the Blind will come out and do a free home assessment and also give you some different magnifiers and things in your home. And then I know like the ALS, um, the Lou Gehrig's Disease Foundation also will do some home equipment and home modifications. You can look at borrowing or renting equipment or also look at used equipment online or some stores will sell some used equipment. Um, lastly, before I take questions, has anyone seen the Ashton Applewhite TED Talk? It's about 10 minutes long, I think, and she talks about the stigma around aging and again, how in we sort of look at aging in our society because we're so focused on marketing to youth, right? We gotta do everything to look younger and feel younger and be younger. And actually, statistics show that we get happier as we get older. There's kind of a U-curve, like we're happier when we're kids and then we kind of go down and then it actually goes up as we age. So really what society tells us and what statistics tell us don't always match. Um, so think about, is it me and are there some things I can change? Or is it my house environment and are there some things I can change in order to age where I want and how I want?